Hi, my name is Linda Booker and I'm a documentary filmmaker. And the excerpts you're about to see are from a film that I created called Straws. In the film, I explored the history of straws, why we're using them, and how they now are harming our environment. I made this film because I respect our beautiful earth and I care deeply about the animals on it. I hope you enjoy watching Straws as much as I did creating it. And I also hope that it inspires you to get outside and do something about plastic pollution. In this clip, you'll learn about the history of straws and how and why they've become so popular. Before watching though, can you guess what the first straws that the ancient Mesopotamians used were made out of? Was it gold or plastic or paper? Watch the history of straws to find out. The history of straws. Some speculate straws were first invented by T-Rexes, for obvious reasons. But officially, straws debuted in ancient Mesopotamia, where Sumerians guzzled through straws of gold. In Egypt, long straws were used to prevent the accidental slurping of insects. Later, South American natives used wooden straws for their mate tea. In 1888, Marvin Stone's wheat straws turned to mush, inspiring him to invent the paper straw. Dang it! At the turn of the century, soda fountain shops offer straws to wary customers, fearful of contagious diseases. In the 30s, hospitals loved Joseph Friedman's new invention, the bendy straw. Money. In the 1950s, the rise of the automobile brought with it fast food and the desire for disposable dinnerware. <laughs> Straws were officially a hit. Cheaper and easier to mass produce, plastic straws were soon everywhere. Crazy straws, magic straws, slurpy straws, and giant straws to go with America's jumbo thirst. Ugh. Unrecyclable. Billions of them are buried in landfills and litter our planet every year, winding up in oceans. No longer a harmless small item, straws are a giant menace. When was the last time you were given a plastic straw or used one? And maybe it was given to you whether you asked for it or maybe you didn't even need it. Have you ever thought about what these are made of? And how many do we go through in one day in the United States alone? And also, what happens to them once we use them for just a few minutes and then throw it away? Well, these are some of the things that we talk about in the full film straws and what we're going to learn about a little bit today. So you may not realize that something so small like a straw can be such a huge contribution to plastic litter and what we now know can harm marine animals. A straw that's used for minutes, or maybe not even at all, can actually last for decades, maybe centuries, in aquatic environments or in landfills, and then they break down into smaller and smaller pieces over time, and we call those microplastics. You are about to meet people who are studying the impact of plastic in our water and also taking action to try to get people to reduce their use of single-use plastic. One of those people is Jackie Nunez, who in 2011 started The Last Plastic Straw, an awareness campaign in California to stop restaurants from giving straws automatically. Our professor Pam Longo Bardi started the Drifters Project using plastic pollution from oceans and she'll tell you how plastic is harming animals who mistake it for food. Can you guess how much plastic goes into oceans annually? Is it 2 million metric tons, 4 million metric tons, or 8 million metric tons? Pay attention to this next clip as Jenna Jambeck illustrates for us how much plastic waste is going into oceans annually. Predominantly the type of trash, what's it made out of that you find? Plastic, correct. But why, why do you think plastic is mostly out there? Litter, yeah. So I've started a campaign called The Last Plastic Straw. And what I'm doing is I'm asking people when you go to a, a restaurant is to ask for um, a drink without a straw. 
and also get restaurants to not give you a straw automatically. So I'm trying to make it helpful as well so they're not giving it to you unless you ask for it. Two months ago, there was a, a video that went viral on the internet of a turtle that got a straw stuck in its nose. Have you guys heard about that one? So this is what it looked like. Little things do matter and straws do harm wildlife. This plastic is functioning as a kind of imposter for food, for lots of creatures. In Greece, they particularly have, uh, on the Cavalonia, they have a lot of um, careta careta, which are loggerhead sea turtles. These are the marks of the turtle beat, or they're eating this foam, polyurethane foam. Plastic is a kind of invader. It's a new substance. It's not from the earth in the way other things are from the earth. Nature doesn't have a way to deal with this um, in the way that it does with other materials. So subsequently, it's coming back to haunt us. My research focus is solid waste uh, around the world and specifically plastic in our environment and in our ocean. We've gone from really not having plastic in our waste stream to 11% of our waste stream. In 2011, there was this interdisciplinary, international working group formed out of the University of California, Santa Barbara. Lots of people had been looking for plastic in the ocean and finding it in animals, in sea ice, in sediments, floating on the surface of the ocean. But we then posed the question, how much is going in? We collected the data from 192 countries with a coastline, and then from there we looked at a 50-kilometer buffer, so looked at their per-person waste generation rates, and then we looked at the quantity of that waste that's plastic. We have three scenarios of um, a low, mid, and high scenario of how much we think might be entering the ocean, and that's where it gets either blown or washed into the waterway or blown or washed directly into the ocean and not collected or picked up before that point. Our mid-estimate is 8 million metric tons um, of plastic going into the ocean globally. In order to sort of visualize 8 million metric tons, um, the way I've been able to do this, if you think about standing on the coastline, so you can pretend you're looking out at the ocean and you're standing on the coastline, you take up about a foot of space. Um, and 8 million, million metric tons is equal to five grocery size bags filled with plastic for every foot of coastline in the world. So you can kind of imagine five grocery bags stacked up in front of you. That's how much we estimated goes into the ocean every year. With increasing population and increasing plastic use, um, that doubles by 2025 to 17 million metric tons. The good news is that you can be part of the solution. The issue of plastic pollutions in oceans can be overwhelming, but there is something that each and one of us can do. You're going to meet Max, an 11-year-old, as he's talking to a restaurant owner that he convinced to stop using plastic straws. We travel to Costa Rica to meet Max and also interview the turtle researchers who rescued that sea turtle with the straw in its nose. That inspired Max to start his No Straw Challenge, and in just three short months, he was able to convince over 40 restaurants to stop serving plastic straws and switch to paper or another sustainable kind of straw. So after Max, Dr. Wallace J. Nichols, who's a very well-known turtle biologist, tells us how we can get started in our own campaign to take action like Jackie and Max. Straws might seem like such an insignificant thing, but we know how fast they can add up. And so do other single-use plastic items. You could use a reusable water bottle or a bag. You could even bring your own utensils to school or a restaurant. You could start a plastic pollution campaign in your school. What will your solution be? Hi, Max. How are you doing? Good to see you. So we've been working on this. I just want you to know that I ordered 300 stainless steel straws today. So they're shipping them, and we probably have them in like 10 days. It's amazing. Yeah. Well, I realize it's more about community actions. Okay. It, like, I can't do this all by myself. So that's why I created the No Straw Challenge, so people would go out and ask restaurants to stop serving straws. Because it's not like I'm going to get to every restaurant in Costa Rica and tell them all to take this no straw challenge. Right. I need help. I think all of us can start to put pressure. 
on this issue in particular and similar issues by starting with the, the place you go. If it's an independent cafe, talk to the owner. And you do it politely, but you just, you know, you just do it, you don't give up. I hope you enjoyed watching these clips from my documentary, Straws, and I hope that you'll be inspired to be part of the solution for plastic pollution. Even though it might seem like a small thing, even just taking a pledge to stop using a plastic straw can add up to big impact to protect our environment and the animals that we share it with. Together, we can make a sea of change, one straw at a time.